Hello, this video will depict an example of an APA results write-up section. Now, I must note up front that these results sections can differ in how they appear. Um, some individuals may require a little bit more information or some information stated in a different format. However, these are the basic key elements of an APA write-up. And specifically, my focus is on the statistical notation and showing you how to take the information from the SPSS output, which is the document on the right, and how to convert that into an APA results section, which is the document on the left. Now, we ran the independent samples t-test in part one of the video. And now in part two, we're gonna show you how to take those results and put them in an APA results write-up. So again, the right sheet contains the SPSS output that we created in the second, in the first video. Now, it's a great idea to start out by simply stating the type of test that was conducted and you know what it was conducted for. So in this case, we say an independent samples t-test was conducted to compare self-esteem scores for males and females. So this clearly articulates that it was an independent samples t-test because we also have the one sample t-test and the parent samples t-test. And it was conducted to compare, we state the self-esteem scores, which is the quantitative variable, and we're comparing them on a nominal or categorical independent variable with two levels, which is males and females. Now, I like to go a little bit more specific and just clearly state what the variables were. The independent variable was gender with two levels, male and females. And that's important because, again, remember, the independent samples t-test can only assess the differences between two groups or two levels of a variable. I simply then state the dependent variable was the quantitative self-esteem score. Again, you would just change this information to reflect the appropriate variables for your analysis. Now I make a statement as to if there was a significant difference in self-esteem scores or not. In this case, it was not a difference. Um, and then I provide the statistical notation, which is the first set of yellow highlight. But I want to emphasize that there was no significant difference. And how do we know that? Well, when we go, remember, to the sick column, we see that the value was 0 0.105. This is the value that identifies significance or not. And remember, if it's less than 0.05, it's significant. If it's greater than 0 0.05, it is not. Now, you'll notice in this SIG two-tail column that you have two numbers, 0 0.098 also. Why don't we report that? Or what is that used for? Well, when you run these analyses, you have to assess the assumptions. And the book talks about the assumptions of the independent samples t-test. So refer to the text for that. Now, one of the key assumptions of the t-test is that of equality of variances um, amongst the dependent variable, the quantitative variable. Now, notice that you have an area called a Levine's test for equality of variances. This differs from the t-test for equality of means. This section is not evaluating the group differences in terms of self-esteem. This section, the Levine's test, is evaluating whether you had equal variances amongst the groups. And as such, it also has a SIG value. If that SIG value is less than 0.05, that means that there is a statistically significant deviation from equal variances. In this case, it is not. So when we report the statistical notation, we report the notation all from the first line. If this value had been less than 0.05, indicating that our assumption of equality of variances was not assumed, in other words, the second line, then all of the statistical notation that we report would be from the bottom line. So again, that's why it's important to assess the assumptions and determine if that assumption has been violated or not, and then it allows you to report the results based on the results of the assumption test. Again, over here is the t-test comparing self-esteem. 
Now, so you'll see statistical notation highlighted in yellow. The first thing we do is make a small italicized T, which indicates it's a T test. And again, it's important to state that it's an independent samples T test because this could also signify a one sample or a parrot sample. 434 is the degrees of freedom, and that is simply taken from the degrees of freedom line. Here, the degrees of freedom again for the first line because we had equal variances. Degrees of freedom is an indicator of sample size, and for the independent samples T test, that would be N minus 2. So the total sample minus 2. So we know now that our total sample was 436. And you could do the math by simply adding up the total N to get 436. So this gives you some indicator of the sample size. So when you read a statistical report now and you see the DF for a T test, you know you have some indication of the sample size um, of the study. Now, then we report the T statistic, 1.62. That is simply taken from the T column, again, for the appropriate line where we had equal variances assumed. I rounded it to two decimal places. Then we report the p-value, 1.1, excuse me, 0.11, two-tailed. Here again, the sig value, two-tailed, 0.105. I rounded to two decimal places. And then we report the male and female um, descriptive statistics, which are the means and the standard deviations. Those simply come from the group statistics for males and females, where you'll see the mean is reported and the standard deviation reported. Now, because the results were not significant, we have to reject the null hypothesis. We have to accept the null hypothesis. In other words, it is maintained where the null hypothesis would have stated that there was no difference. The results indicated no difference, so we maintain that hypothesis. Had the results been significant, we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis, which indicates there was a difference. Then we calculate the effect size, and the formula for calculating effect size is in the text. Um, 0 0.006 represents a small effect size, and that makes sense because we didn't have a significant difference. So gender does not have a significant effect on the um, self-esteem self scores. The magnitude of difference in the means was 0.85. What that number, is, where it comes from, first of all, is the mean difference, 0.847, rounded to 0.85, but that's simply subtracting the two mean scores, and you should get 0.85. So the mean difference score, the average difference score was 0.85, and the confidence interval for this was from a negative 0.18 to a 1.87. Here you get the confidence interval, the lower limit and the upper limit. Again, I have just rounded these numbers. And what the 95% confidence interval means is that if you were to conduct this same test 100 times, of course, using a different sample each time, a different random sample, that 95% of the time you should get or you would get the mean difference score to be somewhere within this range. It gives you some kind of confidence interval, a, a limit as to where and how wide this score could be. Then it's ideal to provide a table and a figure, table and a figure, where the table depicts the descriptive statistics and the figure is a graphical depiction of the results. As you'll see, I have a table one in APA format, which means that the title is italicized in title case. And I show the male and the female column headings the stubs, and then the particular values. Again, all which were taken from the group statistics area. Figure one is a box plot for males and females, just showing this in a graphical depiction. Notice that the figure caption is at the bottom of the figure, unlike the table title, which is at the top of the table. These are APA requirements. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time on that because you should be um, reading chapter five, displaying results and understanding um, all the requirements for tables and figures. So again, you present the results section, all the information that you need is contained in the SPSS output, and then you introduce your figure and your table in your narrative, 
and then you present them right up under the presentation or the um, introduction of the fig table and the figure. And that is how you go from an SPSS output on the right to an AP8 results right up. Remember now, some individuals will want you to um, state the assumptions and what the results of the assumption tests were in the analysis. Some may want some different tweaks to this, but I want you to gather the information to really understand what this statistical notation is, and more important, how to understand that when you uh, read a journal article. Now it should make sense that you know a t-test was done, you have some indication of the sample size, you know the t-statistic, and you know if there was a significant difference between the two groups that were being evaluated. That's the thrust of really understanding the statistical notation when you read a quantitative study. Hopefully this has been very helpful. Good luck on this week's application assignment.